Hey everyone, welcome to episode 145 of the Twim Show. This is your host Sajid Islam and today I'll be going over the notable news and updates from the week of January 23rd through 27th, 2023. So first off, today I'm gonna begin with the earnings report from Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft this week announced the earnings report for Q2 of 23. Now again, if you are kind of alarmed by, hey, we are just in January, how does Microsoft announce the quarterly earnings for Q2 of 23? Well, different companies uh, have different way to, uh, their financial year starts in a different date. For Microsoft, their financial year started, uh, 23 started last year. So they basically Q2 ended in December 31st, 2022. Anyway. Now that you know, let's dive in into their uh, results. Uh, they have, you know, shown a two percent overall uh, increase in revenue that brings to about fifty-two billion dollars, fifty-two point seven billion dollars to of uh, revenue increase. But what's interesting over here was that let's dive a little bit into LinkedIn's revenue gone up by ten percent. Again, LinkedIn is owned by Microsoft. Uh, again, Microsoft uh, CEO Satya Nadella claims that you know, most of those 10% came from talent solutions, which is job post. Uh, so it remains to be seen what those numbers are this year or th- the next quarter as uh, hiring slows down. Now, having said that, you know, again, we don't really care about, you know, how much money they make uh, from talent solutions. What we care about is, you know, and this is a marketing podcast or marketing show, so we care about, you know, what's happening in the marketing world, right? That's why you're listening to it. But, you know, there, you cannot take one without the other. So basically, again, a talent solutions means companies are hiring and companies are hiring means they feel positive about the economy and the things that are happening. So they will, uh, you know, again, I'm drawing very loosely the the thing that I'm drawing those tr- together, the correlation is that then that would mean they will spend more on LinkedIn marketing as well. But having said that, we'll see how those numbers uh, play out. Uh, but LinkedIn is also reporting about 18% growth in total user sessions. They have over 900 million members. So they're saying, you know, one me- there's three members signing up every second. Uh, 30, 80% of those members are from outside the U.S. Um, but my question is, how many of those are fake accounts or bot accounts, right? Um, we'll see, again, especially their international accounts, uh, international members. So we'll see. The other thing is that Microsoft's total ad revenue has increased by 10%. And so that's about $10 billion annually. And Microsoft wants to have an ad revenue of $20 billion. And I feel like it is achievable. Uh, because and if so then Microsoft becomes the sixth largest uh, digital ad seller worldwide why do I think that's achievable even though Microsoft didn't lay out the plan the roadmap it's because look Microsoft has partnered with Netflix or Netflix has partnered with Microsoft so if you want to put ads in Netflix you have to go through Microsoft's uh, or Microsoft Xander X-A-N-D-R obviously Microsoft takes a cut a reseller fee and all those things so basically I feel like you know Netflix is a huge uh, you know uh, opportunity that is there for Microsoft, which allows you know Microsoft's gonna revenue is gonna grow, which means Microsoft ads are gonna be one of those things that are gonna be like you know a growing uh, ecosystem in 2023 and beyond. Okay, that's the key takeaways from the Microsoft earnings report. Nothing you know ad shattering. All you need to know is you know here's what happened, here's what's gonna happen in 2023 and beyond. The other thing is, as we're talking about Microsoft, is let's talk about LinkedIn. LinkedIn has this new feature, which is actually going to go live in February on February 11th. It's like with LinkedIn, you can see, say you are you check my profile out, and you'd be able to see what are some of the LinkedIn subscriptions uh, I have subscribed to, right? The newsletters I've subscribed to. So LinkedIn is rolling this feature out, uh, which think they think they are going to have a boost in. LinkedIn subscription because you know now anyone checking out my profile would be able to say hey what's Sajid interested in and things like that. this is like back in like in early days of Facebook you could say so and so follows this page you could see that right and that would have but I feel like this is a double edged sword while it might give an option to um, you know 
have a more s- subscription newsletter discovery, but at the same time, there is a concern about privacy, if you ask me. I don't generally do not want to see a lot of the subscription that I am, because, you know, people can be judged, right? People could be judged. Like, for example, if I'm subscribing to a Christian uh, newsletter, I could be judged, right? Even though, you know, my last name is Islam, I'm Muslim, but, you know, again, I'm just using that as a general advice. It's a, it's a good old sort unless LinkedIn has this feature where you say, yeah, make my subscriptions about this newsletter uh, public because I want something to be informed and something not, doesn't need to be. I want people to be able to see it and people don't want to be see it. By the way, I'm stumbling or I'm like, I might be a little bit incoherent because I had a small procedure, outpatient surgery this morning, so I'm still under the influence of uh, local anesthesia and things like that. Coming back. So, yeah, the other opportunity here is that, and that's what I mean by double-edged sword, is like, you know, people could be able to, like, you know, say influencers could say, hey, you know what, I will promote your newsletter for a fee. So it opens up a whole new world that didn't exist before. So it's a double-edged sword. I like privacy. Uh, again, to each his own. Uh, it's some people want to play that game. I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. If you're following this, uh, you know, show, you know there is an opportunity right there. That's very cutting edge, bleeding edge. Go ahead, uh, jump into it, and start promoting as a creator who's going to promote your newsletters. Again, I like that. You know, I'm, I don't like to be famous. I don't. I just like to share this show. Uh, if you're following me, you find it. That's great. Uh, but, you know, I like my privacy more than anything else. With that, let's jump back into Twitter. Uh, Twitter has launched this search keyword ads, which is similar to exactly what you are thinking of, Google Ads, All right? If you're thinking of Google Ads, you're right, it's similar to that. Uh, I don't want to deep too much, uh, dive into it. I'm surprised that, you know, other platforms, Instagram, TikTok hasn't done this. Uh, again, this is if now cat is out of the bag let's try other platforms let's see how long it before instagram copies it okay um next up google has discontinued google optimize google optimize is a free a b testing tool it's really very good for conversion rate optimization i'm sad to see it go away because it used to work seamlessly with you know it's a very affordable solution which was free I mean, there was Google Optimize 360, which was a paid enterprise version, but, you know, you could have done it, and it integrated very seamlessly with Google Analytics. Now, Google is saying that they're going to bring in some of these features in GA4. However, you know, they haven't really laid out a roadmap. So just so that you know, Google Optimize goes away on September 30th, 2023, so you have about eight months of use that you can use it. And at that point, you know, all your um, experiments stops running, that's one. And number two is maybe it's lined up with all the layoffs that Google has recently done because they're cutting, you know, cutting away the fat, um, just keeping the core, money making and go forward projects in house and everything else is done. In fact, I was reading somewhere, I forgot which news portal I was reading it on, but you know, apparently Google has killed all their projects in area 120 and only left three. And Area 120 is where they were trying out new opportunities, new ventures, new projects that, you know, that may one day become the next Google or the next Gmail or Google next map. They've killed everything except for three. Anyway, next up uh, on the Google Ads front, Google Ads now support account level negative keywords. Again, this is something, you know, if you're a Google Ads uh, person, you're running Google Ads, you know this is very negative list is something important. Up until now, you could have created only negative list in um, at a campaign level, um, but you know you couldn't. And if you started a new campaign, you would have to copy it over things like that. Now Google allows you to create negative list at an account level. So, for example, if you know certain keywords does not apply to any of my campaigns at a global level, you could just put it at the account level and go from there. However, there is a catch. Google says you can only have a limit of one thousand negative keywords per account. So. Don't go crazy, uh, you know, use it. Again, a little bit of judgment comes into play. You've got to strategize it. You've got to have, a, you know, buckets and things like that, but it's still a good thing. Uh, but Google's kind of, you know, putting, a, uh, like I'm saying, you know, 1,000 negative keywords because they don't want you to do too much because then Google doesn't make money. With that, talking about making money, U.S. Justice Department, along with eight other states, have sued Google on January 24th. 
the DOJ Department of Justice says that you know, hey, Google is a monopoly, especially their ad business. There's a lot of conflict of interest, and they need to be stopped. You know, substance Google, the U.S. government Department of Justice is not going to go out and start suing on uh, you know without doing deep research things like because number one, it's a obviously it's a big case. They want to make sure they have enough evidence and they have an op- they have a very higher chances of winning. Does not mean that Google is going uh, U.S. Department of Justice is going to win, but the fact that DOJ plus eight other states have sued Google because of their monopoly because they have a lot of pervasive conflict of interest is what they are calling it. I kind of I kind of goes back to what I've been always saying, because you run Google Ads and then Google sales reps are going to call to you as Google ad executive or Google executives or whatever they call it, I forgot the latest name is, and they're going to try to help you run ads where they're going to spend more of your money with less of your results with no oversight, and they're going to just take more of your money. And It's just a very crazy game. So I'm not very shocked, surprised, everything, but I am interested to see what happens. And that's one of the reasons why I bring it up is that, look, I've always said, run Google ads, it's necessary evil, but you don't want to listen to the advice of the you know person, Google executive or Google whatever account, whatever who. And I have a video on my, on our YouTube page uh, on what my experience has been and what has really done. Um, but uh, what remains to be seen is it's gonna. It's, this thing is gonna drag on. It's gonna go for a few years. But if the government wins, they are probably gonna take um, ask. Google to divest or create a separate company for his ad network, which I think it's going to be very good. Uh, I hope it happens. Next up, Google has said there are two important elements for Google Discover follow feed. Uh, one of them, obviously, you know, make sure before you do that, make sure your RSS feed is up to date. Again, if the word RSS makes no sense um, or you're kind of unsure what RSS feed is, if your website has an RSS feed, trust me, you should go talk to an expert. Now, with that, Google is saying, look, uh, and they updated the documentation, is that, you know, you, are, you need to have your feed title element. And, uh, yeah, the most important is a follow is a feed title element and your par item link element. So, basically, the title as well as the link has to be there. If not, it's not, there is a, you lose the opportunity to showing your articles and blogs into Google Discover. Again, what is Google Discover? Google Discover is amazing, I will tell you. I've been using a lot. Based on what I've searched on Google, it brings in those related, Google understands my preference and what I'm learning and what I'm reading, and Google is going to show me articles related to that. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it's bad, but overall I like it because when I'm going into my Google Discover app, uh, Google app, I get to see, you know, news articles and, you know, other stories that are related to what my interests are. So you definitely want to use this. Next up, Google has says don't reuse uh, relative paths in your canon- canonical URL. Uh, what is a canonical URL? Basically, it tells search engines that certain similar URLs are actually the same because sometimes you have products or content that you can find on multiple URLs. Like, for example, Market and Grow is a good example. You know, we have marketandgrow.com slash twimshow and then there's twimshow.substack.com. And pretty much this episode is going to get published in both these places. So one of them is going to be like in you know, the primary source. The other is going to be the secondary source. So we put, you know, the one on Market and Grow website as canonical URL um, as like, you know, this is the original copy and the rest is like in you know, duplicate copies. And it just helps. And so Google is saying, look, do not use relative URLs. Use absolute URLs, which is again, you know, put the whole, whole you know, website name slash whatever they are, you know, subdirectory slash the episode name because, you know, relative, if you use relative, how is Google understand? Is it relative to uh, twimshow.substack.com? Is it relative to marketandgrow.com? What is the relative to? And it doesn't make sense. This is not the first time Google is saying that. Google has said this back in 2013 and 2018. They're repeating again and again. It seems like a lot of people don't pay attention and they're doing, making the mistakes and then they complain. Okay. Um, Lastly, for this week is a very interesting question came up, which is, hey, what happens, Google? Am I gonna, should I be worried if my competitor generates a lot of fake URLs on my behalf? So what's the play here is that, let's say, our competitor, let's just say DrEvil.com, right? Dr. Evil created a website called DrEvil.com, and then he's doing a lot of, you know, created a lot of, you know, generated a fake website, which is DrEvil.com, and then putting a lot of, you know, 
articles or you know just putting links things saying marketandgrow.com slash one slash two slash three and everything like that right will will marketandgrow.com get affected to that john miller says no you shouldn't because you know if someone is generating bulk url google doesn't care uh, because google will know it's a you know it's a bulk url it's fake and google is just gonna ignore it so that's something not you have to worry about now, a lot of SEO experts are going to say, you know what, that's not true because it's going to go ca- count against my SEO budget and, you know, crawl budget and things, like, not SEO budget, against my crawl budget that Google has for my website, things like that. Look, Google will, in my opinion, Google will only count it against your crawl budget if it was, or if it, against our crawl budget, if you are going to marketandgrow.com and crawling it. It's going to a third-party website and you know crawling it now if you're so worried about it and you find someone a competitor or someone who wants to hurt your brand is doing that go ahead and disavow that link link all right disavow that link disavow that lo- domain this is something we've covered back in, uh, a few weeks ago in our show now if you haven't if you have concerns still about it reach out to us we can talk about it and we can see or i can help me send us a message and i can dig up that podcast show episode Okay, folks, that's it for this week in marketing. Now you know everything to be in the know. Once again, this is your host, Sajid Islam, signing off. Until next week, take care. Bye-bye.